When we look here at population ecology, this is the, sli the slide we've already seen. Um, we can see here when we talk about population density, um, populations, they, as they get more and more dense, there's going to be things that limit how big this population can become. Because as you can see, this is unrealistic, right? So as the population grows and increases, the amount of resources available stays constant. So that means as you increase members of the population, there's going to be more and more competition because there's fewer resources per individual. So if populations were to continue to grow exponentially um, without restriction, so with unlimited resources, you would have a graph like this, exponential growth, where your R stays constant and you just have growth, 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 growth with nothing stopping it. But we know realistically there's going to be predators, there's going to be competition, there's going to be limited space, there's going to be drought, there's going to be fire, there's going to be flood. There's going to be reasons why populations don't continue to grow exponentially. So you can see in this graph with logistic growth, yeah, it does start to grow exponentially, but eventually it reaches a limit. So if I have here this graph and uh, the elephant population, once it was protected from hunting, starts to multiply, well, oh, there's a lot of elephants. Things like competition for food, competition for space, competition for mates. You're gonna have some, um, a decrease in population size. Not all members will survive. Then, oh, hey, check it out. We got more food, there's more space, there's less of us. So then breeding happens, dun, 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 and now you have an increase in population. And then, oh man, kind of overcrowding, kind of ate too many of the plants. Oh shoot, starvation, so population decreases. And so over time, you get this fluctuation. And if scientists take that at an average of where it fluctuates over, under, over, under, this part right here actually, when you go over, is called an overshoot, you find the carrying capacity. It's about the average number of individuals that can be supported in an environment. So populations um, can grow exponentially to a point. Eventually competition and other things called limiting factors will limit how big that population gets. So when we look at limiting factors, that could be nutrient availability, meaning the amount of food, whether it's in the soil, whether it's prey, whether it's plants for herbivores, amount of energy in an ecosystem. One bear requires 20,000 calories. Is there enough food in a forest available to bears to support a large population? What about shelter? Is it a deer that has a den where it has its babies? Or is it a bear that hibernates? Or is it a burrowing owl? Is there enough shelter? There's gonna be competition for that. How about available water sources? Every single living thing needs water, so is there enough water? Uh, and you also have about refuge from predators. How are you gonna escape? So these are just a few of the limiting factors that are gonna influence population size as well as population density. A lot of limiting factors are the the things that prevent exponential growth. Um, so when we look at this, you can have like a exponential growth, but then it's gonna be decreased by these limiting factors. So if I look here at like some buffalo or wildebeest or something and they're grazing, over time, like here's a, um, a hillside that had a fence down the middle. You could see on the left there was overgrazing, on the right what it would look like normally. So animals, as a population grows exponentially, um, they tend to overgraze, especially herbivores, and then you have a population crash. And so, um, yeah, once a population stabilizes, you have something called carrying capacity. Okay, so, oh, another cool thing is that N, as N increases, as the population size increases, the growth rate changes as it nears carrying capacity. You can see here you have a steep growth rate, but as you get close to carrying capacity right here, that R, or the growth rate, is going to be quite a bit smaller. There's less being born than during exponential growth. Okay, there's my question. What's happening to R? And as you approach, or as you move towards carrying capacity, the growth rate actually gets closer and closer to zero.